Our scriptures this week comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, and 9, verses 19 to 20, and from 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, and 19 to 20, and 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. Hear now the reading of God's word from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So Samuel went and lied down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Then Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Then the Lord called Samuel again for a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, saying, Go, lie down, and if he calls you again, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And as Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall onto the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. From the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5, to 12. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' name, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars clay, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being driven, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. 
So death is at work in us, but life in you. Hear now the reading. Thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, we read the story about Nicodemus. He was not only a secret follower of Jesus, but he was also his advocate and witness among the Jewish religious council, the Sanhedrin. Even though he was a minority voice, he came to visit Jesus by night, seeking answers to many of his questions concerning his personal faith and salvation. Jesus' response to Nicodemus' inquiry left him somewhat dumbfounded and perceived as almost as an impossible challenge. Remember what Jesus told Nicodemus about the kingdom of God, concerning the kingdom of God? He said that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. How could anyone enter his or her mother's womb for the second time and be born again? Obviously, Jesus' response was metaphorical to what he actually meant literally. He was referring to one's need for a spiritual awakening, a wake-up call or a rebirth in order to enter the kingdom of God. Indirectly, Jesus challenged Nicodemus and to us today to think and act outside the box. Instead of brushing off God's challenges to us as a mission impossible, perhaps we ought to open ourselves up and to invite the Holy Spirit to work among us today. After all, this is the season of Pentecost. It is about dream, dream, dreaming dreams and seeing visions beyond what is ordinary and of our expectation. Never be content or be surprised by what the Spirit has in store for us next. Sometimes the greatest obstacles that we need to overcome is ourselves in order to bring to fruition our fullest potentials and respond to our own callings with our God-giving gifts. In the Old Testament lesson that we read earlier from 1 Samuel, we came across a familiar calling narrative of the young boy prophet, of the young boy Samuel. Samuel was only a boy at a time, maybe 11 to 12 years old. Ever since he was, ever since he was young, Samuel's parents dedicated him to the work of the temple as he was being trained and mentored by the prophet Eli. Likewise, Eli saw a great deal of potential of this young boy ahead. Incidentally, the young Samuel's response to his calling was also reflective of the people's obedience or lack thereof to the Lord. You see, because of the people's disobedience and sinful misbehaviors, the relationship between the Lord and the people were distant and remain silent for years. It's in a state of dormant. But that didn't mean that the Lord had abandoned the people as the Lord kept the faith to the covenant that was made between the Lord and the people. In verse 1, it says that, quote, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. This made the role of the prophet even more crucial. 
as he served as the mediator and the critical link between the Lord and the people. Eli was eager also to pass on the torch to find his successors who would continue his work. But Eli knew that he's getting old. His eyesight had become more and more dim until the point that soon he would not be seeing. However, that didn't mean that the Lord had abandoned his vision and his hope for his people. Our passage, as our passage today tells us, that the young boy Samuel had not yet known the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. In other words, this means that even though Samuel had been around the temple for many years since childhood, he knew the ins and outs of the many of the religious practices. There is still a need for a confirmation a mutual commitment in order to establish such covenant relationship as one responds to God's call. This is all part of God's preparation and the testimony of one's faith. Perhaps if we take a step, if we take a step back, we too may come to realize that the, we come to realize that the young boy Samuel's faith journey and calling was indicative and reflective of the people dead, who were living in a casual, undisciplined, and undevoted spiritual life. Their relationship with their relationship seemed foreign to and displeasing to God as many were living according to their own ways and standards and not of the Lord's. Nevertheless, despite the undisciplined and wayward living of the people, as much as they deserved judgment from the Lord, the Lord remained faithful, merciful, and committed to them. Through the repeated calling attempts by the Lord to Samuel through his dreams. Samuel kept getting up and turned to his mentor, Eli, asking if he had called. But each time, Eli responded to Samuel, saying that he had not called him. Again, he did it the second time. And after the third time, Eli realized what was happening. He didn't call Samuel, the Lord did. He knew it was the Lord who was reaching out to the young boy. The Lord kept knocking, and this time, as instructed by Eli, Samuel knew exactly what and how to respond. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, Samuel said. Samuel's response was a total surrendering and submission to the Lord's calling. It established a servant-master relationship as one seeks to and invites the Holy Spirit and the Lord to speak to us in a personal way. Come to think of it, how often do we hear but fail to listen? and be obedient to what is required of us. Are we being too distracted with trivial matters in our lives and fail to recognize God's calling and to realize God's potentials in us? Or perhaps are we like the young Samuel, that we might be exposed we might have been exposed to the Lord's teachings throughout our lives, yet our understanding and our relationship with the Lord were shadow, 
superficial, and are in need of a deeper seasoning and further development. We might have grown up in and around the church for years, yet we find ourselves living in a very shadow faith of becoming mundane and finding ourselves with a lack of self-discipline and devotion to the Lord's teaching. Perhaps we need to be like Nicodemus once again in order to seek God and to reignite the passion of our faith through our spiritual rebirth and revival. In the second passage that we read earlier, the Apostle Paul was writing to the early church in Corinth, addressing the spiritual grounding and revival that one needs among the many, among the early disciples in Corinth. Paul wanted to encourage them to realize their fullest potentials as witnesses of the gospel through their everyday life testimony. The early church at that time was challenged by many false prophets' teachings, paganisms, idol worshiping, and other forms of ethical immorality. The spiritual faith and personal values of many of those early Christians were being challenged, and some were even persecuted politically. And as Paul wrote to the Corinthians, to reassure their faith and to encourage them of keeping on fighting the good fight, keep, it, keep running this race that God has set before them. Keep God's vision and dream alive as we honor our calling through the witnesses of our faith, even if it may seem uncertain and murky at times. When the situations become dire and desperate, Paul reminded us that we are the treasure in the jar of clay, that God's extraordinary power may one day be manifested in us. Like the young boy Samuel, it may take a season to nurture, to prepare for the Lord's use in us. As God asks of us in a spirit of discipline and obedience to follow God's will until the very end. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And as the apostle wrote to the early church, saying, we may be afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. But Paul did not stop there. He challenged the Corinthians and likewise to us today that our life is nothing less than a testimony and a witness of God's work in us. Not only when things are going well, but, it, but also when things are not going well as well. As Paul also wrote, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness, so I may boast all the more gladly in my weaknesses, so that the power of God, the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Friends, in the midst, in the midst of unexpected trials and challenges in life, 
we ought to give thanks to God so that we may turn our challenges as our living hope and testimony as we witness our faith so that others may know God's extraordinary power indeed among us. Always carrying in the body the death of Christ as a sign of our witness so that the life of Jesus Christ may be made visible through our bodies. Come to think of it, how many of us right now can make such bold claim that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our body and in our lives today? Whatever we do here on earth, as trivial and insignificant as you might think, we bear the image of Christ's life, his death, and his resurrection. Our life reflect upon his teachings through his commandments. Whenever we experience hardships and trials in life, God reassures us that his presence will go before us no matter what, for as long as we place our faith and trust in Christ. And by so doing, we fulfill our calling of living in a kononia community. Friends, God's mission remains active for as long as there are souls that need to be saved and lives that need to be transformed. What is impossible with human is possible with God. And out of darkness, let the light of Christ shine through us so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in all that we do. So let us repurpose our lives for God's use, for the greater fulfillment of God's kingdom that is already here and is yet to come. Thanks be to God, the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.